Welcome to the United in Christ Lutheran Parish. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to our worship on this Sunday, September 20th. We begin our worship as we gather, as we live in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The good news is this. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join in singing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Oh, mm -hmm. 
Let's pray together the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you show perpetual loving kindness to us, your servants. Because we cannot rely on our own abilities, grant us your merciful judgment and train us to embody the generosity of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning, kids. Oh, well, not long ago, my granddaughter Delilah asked me, Grandpa, do you love me? And I said, yes, Delilah, I love you. And then she asked me, do you love Grandma? And I said, yes, I love Grandma. And then she asked, well, which one of us do you love the most? And I said, well, Delilah, I love you differently. I, I love Grandma as my wife, and I love you as my granddaughter, and uh, I, can't, I can't make a distinction there about who I love the most. Um, we always, I think, tend to want to kind of think in those terms about being uh, the most, the best, the most loved. I have a friend who has a t-shirt that says on it, Jesus loves you. And then underneath that it says, but he likes me best. Well, that's a joke, of course, uh, because Jesus doesn't have any favorites. And this story that you'll hear in a bit that Jesus told, I think is exactly about that. It's about, he tells it because people were upset because he was uh, hanging out with the wrong people. He wasn't just with the, the good people, the, the religious people, but he would go and have dinner with and be with and talk to and make friends with people who other people didn't think he had any business being with because they weren't part of their group. They, they wanted to think of themselves as being God's favorites. And Jesus made a point of saying that God doesn't have favorites. Uh, in this story, he tells it like that there, were, there was a man who had a vineyard. That's a place where they grow, grow grapevines. And he, it was harvest time, and he went out early in the morning, and he hired some people to come, and he told them what he would pay them. And uh, then a little later on, he went out to this and hired some more and told them that he would give them a fair wage and some more later on and some more later on up right up to the end of the day about an hour before the harvest was over and he had more come and then when he paid them or had them paid they all got exactly the same thing even the people that came in last and the ones who went first, they didn't think that was right. And Jesus said, the, the man who owned the vineyard said, well, are you, are you unhappy with me because of my, my generosity, because I want to pay everybody the same? You see, that's the way God is. Uh, he doesn't have favorites. Uh, he doesn't love us more because we're Lutherans and our friends might be Catholics or Methodists or might not be even Christians. He loves all of us. Uh, there is no distinction with how much he loves us. He loves everybody as if they're his children. Just like I love my grandchildren, I love my wife, and I love my children. I can't, I can't choose. I can't say that I have a favorite. I love them all. Now, as much as I love those in my family, God loves us much more than our mothers and fathers and grandmas and grandpas. We don't even have any idea with how much he loves us, but we have a hint. He loves us so much that he sent Jesus to be with us and to die for us. 
so that we would understand better how much he loves us. Don't ever forget that. God doesn't have favorites, but he loves you so much you can't even imagine it. Have a good week, kids. The Holy Gospel for this Sunday is taken from the book of Matthew, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. At about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then go to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowners, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to you, to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So, when I was still in seminary down in the cities, almost every day I would drive home from school. And I would do this by uh, first getting on Como Avenue, then 280, and then ultimately 35W. Now, for a pretty significant amount of time, there was construction being done in this area. And just about on the stretch of road where uh, 280 would merge on to 35W, it shrunk down from two lanes to one. So, of course, when this happens, there are signs everywhere, well in advance of this convergence, you know, telling people, please merge to the right lane as the left one is going to disappear. Now when I'm driving along and I see these signs and uh, being the good responsible member of society who cares about the rules, I immediately get into the right lane. Now, does uh, getting into the right lane slow my approach some? Yes, of course, because now I'm sort of stuck in a, in a line. But that's okay, because I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing what the sign told me to do. I'm acting in accordance with the laws of society. But then there are those other people. There's always, without fail, those other people who see the signs, who see everyone else merging right, and what they do is they quickly accelerate and just shoot to the end of the left lane to the last possible point that they can be in that lane and then they try to 
push their way in to the right lane at the very, very end. Now, these people, they are in fact the worst. I am at this point in my car, I am losing my mind, I am holding my steering wheel, and I am screaming unfathomable things, not only at these cars that are behaving in this way, but also the cars that are in line in front of me who are daring to let these bullies in. I assure you, when it's my turn and I am up there, I will leave no room for any of these people. They saw the signs and I will not reward them for trying to get ahead at the expense of all us good people who diligently waited their turn. Now I'm sure some of you are thinking right now, what's a big deal? You know, why are you flying out the handle at this sort of thing? I do that. You know, I see an opening and I take it. That's why you got to behave in this society. It's how you get ahead in this world. You see your spot and you take it. Well, I say to you now, all you who think this way, I know who you are. You are the cutters. You are the vicious, vacuous, hollow line cutters that we, the good people, have been dealing with for our entire lives. We remember you. We remember you from elementary school in the lunch line ahead of us when you thought it was okay to wave your little friends in and say, hey, hey, you know, you can get front seats or back seats. It's good. I'm saving a spot. Don't worry, people back there. Their so spot was saved. Let me tell you this right now. There's no saving spots. There's only cutting and there's standing in line the right way. That's all you get. Cutting and the right way. And you are cutting. If you don't want to put in the work of waiting in line, get ready to be hungry. For all of you, all of you who don't think cutting in line is a big deal, I would love, love to see you justify that way of thinking at Disneyland. See what happens when you try to have someone save you a spot in the two and a half hour line for Space Mountain. See what happens. If you don't put in the work, you do not get the reward. On a completely unrelated note, uh, the last time I went to a Disney park uh, for uh, a few days, I, uh, I hurt my foot on the first day because I was just walking so much. And because of that, for the rest of the trip, the moment I got into the park, I elected to pay $20 for a wheelchair. And the employees ask no questions whatsoever. They don't want any certificate of injury. And, and you just get this wheelchair and you roll around for the rest of the trip. And because of this, not just me, but my entire party, we were ushered to the front of so many lines. And it was glorious. It was the best time I've ever had at a theme park. I highly recommend it. In today's reading from Matthew, Jesus tells a parable that is, uh, is quite upsetting. Jesus speaks of a landowner who throughout the day, he goes out and he finds laborers to work in his vineyard. He goes out very, very early in the morning and finds a group and sends them out. He goes out at nine, finds another group. He goes out at noon, finds another group. He goes out at three, finds another group. And then ultimately he goes out at five and finds yet another group to send into his vineyard. This last group, he asked them, why have you been standing here all day just doing nothing? And they tell him they're just standing there because nobody would hire them. Well, he does. 
He hires them. He sends them into his vineyard to work. And when the day is done, all the workers get paid. And they all get paid the exact same amount. Now, naturally, the workers that were there the earliest are a little bit upset by this arrangement. They go and they complain to the landowner and he sort of turns the tables on them. He tells them, hey, I, I did exactly what I said I was going to do. And then he asks them, are you angry with me because I'm just so generous? Doesn't this parable just sort of make you mad? It's awful. It's unfair. It does not fit with our world's way of doing things. It's so easy to read something like this and be able to point to it and say, that is unfair. And fair, fair is something we like. Fair is good. We use that word a lot. We want things to be fair. Sort of. I mean, I guess it's probably more accurate uh, when we say that, well, we say we want things to be fair. We, the thing is, I think the situation in the parable, you could, be, you could look at it and say, well, it is kind of fair. I mean, the landowner, he paid every single person the same. That is fair. That's equality. Everyone gets the same. The problem is, that's not really what we want. Not really. You see, everyone getting the same, well, that doesn't take into account the individual and all that the individual has done. So no, we don't want equality, not an equality that looks like that. What we want is our reward to be based upon merit. You work more, you get paid more. You get in line first and you wait the way that you're supposed to and then you get to be at the front of the line. You don't get paid as much as someone who worked more than you and you don't run up and cut in line. Now, there is one uh, exception here. And that is if you are the person who is benefiting from working less or cutting in line. You see, the person who cuts in line is very rarely the one complaining about it. <laughs> this parable is so rotten. It's, it's a bad way of looking at things. Especially if you take what Jesus says in the parable and attribute it to the way that the kingdom of heaven works. Here is the way that the kingdom of heaven should work. You know, good people should get in. People who follow the commandments, people who regularly go to church, people who have a, a pure heart, all that good stuff. They should definitely get in. And, and you know, I'm not saying that the others uh, can't get in as well, but at least make sure that the good people get in first. You know, if there's any sweets available, then, you know, they, they should have first choice. And so on, like that. This is, as far as I know, I, I think most people, it's just basic idea of how heaven works and looks, it's based on merit. Be good so you go to heaven. Again, uh, the exception here would be the bad person who gets into heaven. They would not complain about a change of the rules. Now, there's some snags of, uh, in taking this way of looking at things and applying it to the way God's kingdom works. First and foremost, uh, if we use the parable as an example, all of the money that is being given out here is the landowners. 
It's all his. And so, with him being the boss, and since the parable makes no mention of contracts or anything like that, it's all up to him how much people get paid. He gets to decide how much he wants to give out. It strikes me that, that we, as humans, are, are really, really good at telling one another what we should be doing with our money, with our wealth. We're so good at telling other people what they should be doing with what is theirs. <sighs> Even though uh, exactly none of us like to be told what to do with our stuff. The landowner is the one who decides. And all are captive to his whim. And it is the same with God and heaven. He decides it, not us, because it's all his. If he's determined that uh, what we would consider the bad people get in just the same as the good people, if he has decided that, you know, if let's say there is such a thing as a line into heaven that cutting is totally allowed. Who are we to actually say anything about it? Who are we? He's being generous. He's being forgiving. And frankly, it's too bad if that offends our delicate sensibilities. Now, just one more thing about us insisting that the joys of heaven be given out based on merit. And I think all of us should think really hard about this. Do we really, do we really want God giving us the reward that we deserve? Do you really want the teacher taking a closer look at your homework? Do you really want your mom going up to your room to check and see if you really cleaned it? Do you really want the referee to uh, go back and look at the replay and see if your toe was actually on the line when you took that shot? I don't. <laughs> I don't want that at all. I think I'm good with God just sort of waving people in. I'm good with Jesus' death and resurrection being the avenue by which all of us are forgiven. Because the reality is, I am the person who cuts in line. I am the one who copies someone else's homework. I am the one who just swept all of my junk underneath my bed rather than putting it away the way my mom asked and I totally had my toe on the three-point line. The last thing I want is all that I deserve. And I rejoice, I thank God, that we are given so much more than that. Amen.
whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and those in need. Let us pray. Generous God, you make the last first and the first last. Where this gospel challenges the church, equip it for works of service. Strengthen those who suffer for Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sun and wind, bushes and worms, cattle and great cities, nothing in creation is outside your concern, Lord God. In your mercy, Tend to it all. Give us a spirit of generosity toward all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Where we find envy and create enemies, you provide enough for all. Bring peace to places of conflict and violence. Inspire leaders with creativity and wisdom. Bless the work of negotiators, peacekeepers, and development workers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Reveal yourself to all in need, as you are gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Accompany judges and lawyers, victims of crime and those serving sentences. Give fruitful labor and a livelihood to those seeking work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Even beyond our expectations, gracious God, you choose to give generously. Grant life, health, and courage to all who were in need. We remember this morning Ronnie Peterson, Irv Tosted, Bob Norland, Nancy Anderson, Darlene Kronschnabel, Missy Grass, Becky Omdahl, Michelle Broughton, Linda Steiner, Mary Miney, Sherry Wellman, Gary Werner, Mark Dobmeyer, Div Ofstedal, Rory Hamry, Roger Feld, Dan Kemper, Julie Morales, Percy Miranda, Roger Hansen, Butch Olson, Matt Larson, Sandra Jensen, Alan Torpet, Jim Larson, Celia Gertzen. Be with those fighting fires out in the western United States, and be with all who have lost homes, communities, and uh, 
jobs from, and family members from the forest fires. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you for the generations that have declared your power and love to us. Comfort all who are grieving, including the families of Robert Rood, Adarine Bennis, and Greg Stuhog. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we have done on previous Sundays, we celebrate Holy Communion together. So I invite you to gather some crackers or bread, wine or grape juice as we celebrate the Lord's Supper together. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together we pray as Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. We join in singing, O living bread from heaven. of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst 
guided by the example of our Savior Jesus, and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction. As you go, Leaving a